Welcome to Casting Kings, and I'm your host, Tony Fontenot. Fishing on a Falgo Canal landing. We went up the ship channel, went through Cocodri. We're out here in the Gulf, about 20 miles out. We're about to smoke some red snapper. David Prevost is our captain. We got Chris Macaluso, he brought a couple of his buddies. So get ready for an exciting half hour with Casting Cajun. Cast and Cajun is brought to you by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center for expert, compassionate care. Grafton Dermatology, specializing in diseases of the skin, hair, nails, and cosmetic surgery. Cajun Home Improvements, the last roof you'll ever buy. Don's Wholesale, your truck superstore with the largest selection of pre-owned trucks in Louisiana. Homeatravel.com, experience world-class fishing in the heart of Louisiana. Visit Homeatravel.com. And by Tony Sacheries, makes everything taste great. This is what I'm using. It's a three ounce jig head. Crappie psychic trailer. Oh, it rolled. Oh, it took my, my um, trailer. First bite. Talk about selective harvest. Sucker like came up and hit a jig. Using a Berkeley goat, but he did have one of these uh, pink crappie psychic trailers on it. Yeah, he took my trailer. I had just a trailer on a jig head, and uh, something took it. You want him in the boat, or? Yeah. Boom. Right the oh, Tony, you all right? Yeah, I just had to get my crappie psychic trailers. Uh, what? This is called a cushion, made by Luna C. You don't have to use a fighting belt, which you don't need a fighting belt for snapper anyway, but it keeps you from getting bruises on your belly. I'm using a Dakota, Shimano Dakota, 600 series. I actually bought this for tarpon fishing, but I'm gonna use it today, first time I use it. Another feature of this cushion is if you drop your rod overboard, it floats. Hey, why don't you try it, Tony? Not in this one, I'll try it in the swimming pool. <laughs> Chris Macaluso, always funny. Look at him. You can see him right here out. on the surface. Yeah, they, uh, I see something marking them under the boat, too. Try not to get tangled with Gary while also getting a little Picky with the out. ones we catch. Oh, fish That's on. Good, Gary. Oh, that didn't take long, Dave. No, fish on. We like them coming to the surface. Oh, oh that was, that was close. Chris, Chris, I saw Chris that come one. up behind you. Oh, here he comes. No, oh, I don't Chris want you. One. Look oh, out him underneath the boat. Light him under the boat Whoa, right that now. was right at the surface, Chris. How incredible was that? I watched that snapper just eat my bait. I just watched him inhale that big green uh, gulp mullet. Fish on here too. I, I, I only had the head left of this bait. Curly tail mullet that I carry in my bag for lemon fish fishing and that sucker just swam up to the surface and swallowed it. Oh, yeah. There's no shortage of fish. I'm not sure why we're only fishing nine days because they are here and they are thick. And they're hungry. And they're hungry. Be nice to catch them a few more days, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. I think we have two more days after the day. They well, come Sunday, season. that's it. Yeah. Dave has got a little bit nicer fish here. Most of these fish that we're catching here are two to three, four-year-old fish. They, they're younger fish. You know, Noah tells us that all the fish that we're catching these days are coming out of that, they're the, they're the 10 to 12 pound fish that came right after Hurricane Katrina in 2006, 2007. But these are all younger fish than that. So that shows you it's not just one good year class. There's a bunch of red snapper out here. There's a bunch of red snapper out here! Come on, baby. I don't know what size he is yet. God, dog. But
a little one. Oh, come here. Get your head above water. Look at that. I am catching mine on a green jig head tipped with a pink crappie psychic mega trailer. Thread it on here. Go down and get a red snapper. There it is. Oh, oh, you bumped it on the, yeah. on the, on you the don't need live bait. You don't need real bait. They'll hit plastic. Well, this feels like a decent one. This might be one I'll keep. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Show the folks at home what you look like. Might even use you in a cooking segment. Ah, I like that, folks. This is awesome. Good fight, right tackle. Well, it's 50 pound test, uh, mono. Shimano Dakota 600. Uh, not too big. Oh, not too bad. That's not bad, that's not bad. That's a pretty one right there. They've got really sharp teeth. And their gill plates are like razor blades. They will cut you. So I brought my little gripper that I use in my kayak. Working fine. This is fun. This fishing thing is going to probably catch on, I think. <laughs> Everybody in Louisiana ought to be fishing today. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. That's a good one. That's a keeper. Keeper. This snapper here is probably about eight, nine pounds, and that's probably the average as we're catching out here today. Some smaller ones, but uh, you know, um, nice fish, nice eater fish. Eight or nine. When I lived in Florida, we called that 12. Hey, -o. <laughs> fish on. By the time Glenn gets the box open, he gets that fish under control, I'll. Uh... Have mine, and I hope. Look out, fish, fish coming overboard. Oh, boom, boom, almost. Here we go. Here we go. We got him moving. And boom. Good job, Tony. Out of way. Oh, he swallowed it. He swallowed that pretty good. That was that jig. You got that jig in it. Oh, no, it's not too far in there. Stick your fingers in there. <laughs> The limit on snapper is two per person. We've got six people, including the cameraman. We went ahead and let him catch his first two and get that out of the way so he could shoot us catching the other 10. So we put eight in the box plus his two. We have two left to keep, so we're being picky. Try to keep two big ones. Uh-oh, Chris has got one. Chris has got one. Oh, is it a big one, Chris? No, he, oh, he off. got off. Uh oh. Come on, Chris. See, what I'm doing is I'm trying to use a bigger piece of bait and a big circle hook, like a 10-odd circle hook, and that cuts down on your hookups on the small ones. So if you want to target bigger fish, use bigger baits, bigger circle hooks, and that way you cut down on catching the smaller fish. Personally, I like to eat the small ones. But remember, 16-inch minimum, whether you fish in federal water or state water. Man, Tony, you got a beautiful truck. I got 215,000 miles on my baby, and I'm about ready to replace her. What should I do? Well, Chris, you need to go see my good friend Luke Terrio at Don's Wholesale in Broussard. In fact, check out this commercial. about these big hooks, the fish has got to be big enough to get that whole hook in his mouth. So what you want to do is let that bait go down and when that rod loads up and, and heads towards the water surface, start cranking on it. Circle hook, you don't want to set the hook, you just want to start cranking. One's hitting it now. There he is. Woo! Do you have a big one, Macaluso? Oh, Tony, he's taking drag, buddy. 
Yeah, he feels like a good one, bud. That's what I've been looking for. Since you, like to, eat the, since you for. like to eat the little ones, I'll keep that one. Oh, <laughs> that's a deal. Woo! Oh, that is a good one. That is a good one, Chris. Could be big of the day. The main problem with red snapper is not that there are not enough of them. They're obviously red snapper all over the Gulf. There's never been more red snapper. The problem is the way the federal government requires them to be managed, the way the law says they have to be controlled. That's where we run into problems. Federal management right now is not working very well when it comes to recreational fishing. State management, on the other hand, working pretty well. The Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, the American Sport Fishing Association, the Coastal Conservation Association, and many others right now are working very hard to try to work with the federal government to find a better way to have these fish managed. I noticed you didn't want to flip them over and break your rod. Oh, no, I did not. Now, Chris, what about our, our pre-production meeting? Weren't you told not to turn your back on the camera, bring the fish in towards the camera? What's up with this? This is not your first show. Tony, the first 30 I caught, I swung towards the camera. I forgot on that one. All right, it's on. Now, now, Chris, this is not a big one, but I'm going to show you how to bring him in towards the camera. Please. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, there you go. There you go. I just got to give you a hard time, my buddy. I appreciate you're really, that. You're really an awesome guest. Chris and I have been using bigger baits to try to catch bigger fish. So far, it's not working for me. Goodbye, little buddy. I thought we'd try the port side of the boat. There's just one beautiful fish after another, and it can't get enough. My name's Glenn Hughes. I work for the American Sport Fishing Association. We represent the, the sport fishing trade industry. So all the fishing tackle, rods, reels, lines, and lures, but it's also boats and engines, marine electronics, fishing clothing, etc. ASA also has an advocacy arm called Keep America Fishing. And Keep America Fishing is designed to make sure that people are aware of the situations that we have around the United States and also get them engaged with some of these issues. So what we do is we try to advocate for clean water, sustainable fisheries, and access to both. I've been so uh, fortunate, so blessed to be able to be in the fishing business for more than 25 years and have a chance to fish in a lot of great locations, whether it's in the North America, up to Alaska, and down through Latin America. But there's a special place in my heart for Louisiana fishing. It's just a tremendous fishery, so many species, so many fish to be caught, big fish to be caught. The weather's great, the people are great, the food's great, and boy, the fishing is just hard to beat. Compared to other places, I don't know where you could find the red snapper like this anywhere else in the country. And that includes Florida, whether you're in the Keys or whether you're off the east or west coast of Florida. It was really just tremendous fishery out of this southern Louisiana. Tell you what, if, if, there's, if we're looking for snapper, maybe we've got the wrong species because these guys are red and they look like snapper. And we must be catching something else, though, because uh, supposedly there aren't enough here. I believe there's plenty here, and there's plenty more, and everybody ought to come out and go fishing with us. That's right. Got this guy off the bottom. That's right. Call your legislators. Thank you. Look at that, one plastic. I know a man like you can handle that little red snapper. Come on. Is he a big one? Is he a big one? Looks like a big one. Fighting like a big one. Hey, oh. You've been waiting for this all day long, haven't you? But now at night, I'll get down. Oh, about levy on sacred ground. Sacred ground, sacred ground. Oh, yeah. That's a decent one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Snap a gaffin. 
Where's the snapper guy? Oh, yeah. Hook him under the jaw. Don't knock him off. Hook him under the jaw. That'll be good. I just had a bite. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, this is a good one, Chris. This is a good one, Chris. You look like it, buddy. They all good ones, Tony. They're all good ones. You're right. Even the little ones are good ones. Oh, I thought it was a bigger one. But... He's just That's mad. It. He's just mad. He's strong. He must work out. Oh, it's a little one. It sure did pull good. He's, yeah, he's not a bad sized fish, but compared to the ones we kept, he's a little. Well, guys, I think we've got our limit. When we come back, the lovely Becky Grafton prepares her famous mango salsa over grilled red snapper. This casting Cajun cooking segment is brought to you by Tony Sashries makes everything taste great. Becky's gonna make her delicious mango salsa over grilled red snapper. I'm gonna start preparing the snapper for the grill. So I'm just gonna take a fillet of snapper, place it on some aluminum foil. Snapper fresh from the boat, so it doesn't get any fresher than this. Juice of a little bit lemon, place an onion, butter, a little bit Cajun seasoning on there. You can use salt and pepper. Doesn't need much because it's so fresh and so tasty. All right, that's it. I'll wrap it up. and it's ready for the grill. Okay, so I sauteed the bell pepper and onion, a little bit of butter. Um, you can use olive oil if you don't have butter. It all works the same. I'm gonna go ahead and add some cherry tomatoes to that, jalapeno peppers, and then mango. And give it a little stir. If you don't have mango, you can use peach or even pineapple. That tastes good also. I also add about a tablespoon or two of um, orange marmalade. It just adds extra sweetness to the mixture and it kind of keeps everything together. And stir that up really good. And then at the end here, I'm just gonna add the last ingredient, which is cilantro. This is a really healthy dish. It's light, fresh, good in the summertime. Okay, we're just gonna let the flavors come together for a few more minutes and set it aside and get ready for the grilled fish. Just before I serve the mango salsa over the grilled snapper, I always squeeze in a little lime juice that just gives it that extra little kick. Well, Bo, you think you're ready for this? I don't know, dude. <laughs> We'll find out. As a special surprise, we've got something crispy to go along with Becky's dish. It's sea spiders. Not to be confused with black widows or tarantulas. What you do is, you take these sea spiders, you put a little Worcestershire sauce, and this enough, Bo? Minimal, minimal. Okay, there you go. Your favorite hot sauce. Then take Becky's lemon squeezer, Mix them up in a little fish fry. We've got really fine cornmeal here. You don't cook them very long. They're real. It's hot too. Yeah, about 400 degrees. Grease, 400 degree grease. They only take a minute and a half, two minutes at the most to cook. You hear how they quit going and they're just barely bubbling when they, when out? They quit frying, they're ready. That means they're ready. Oh, don't get bit by one of those. You'll be hooked. Light, crispy, and delicious. 
What do you think, Bo? We ought to show, should we show them where the sea spiders live? I think we should. Okay. Okay. I know this looks like an ordinary shrimp. What you do is you buy large shrimp or jumbo. You remove the head and the eyes. And there you have it. That's your sea spider. All it is is the legs and the meat and the head. You talk about tender, delicious, and you could eat a ton of them. They're not filling at all. So when you get those extra large shrimp and you pay that premium price, don't throw away the heads. Right, Bo? That's right, Tony. Try one of these sea spiders and tell me what you think. In fact, let me dump some more in there with me. So I say, Bo, eh? Right on the money, dude. Okay, so Bo and Tony just brought in the fresh snapper from the grill with uh, corn that we grew in our garden. We have the sea spiders, and I'm gonna go ahead and top it off with our mango salsa. And there you have it. Well, I guess our time's just about up. I think we all had a great time catching yeah, a lot of fish yeah, today. Awesome. I got to meet two new friends. As always, we gotta give a special thanks to our military, both our active troops and our veterans. We love you, appreciate all you do for us. So until next time, keep, keep on casting! Bujo graduated high school and got accepted to a small college. He figured since he was a big hefty boy from working on the oyster boat every summer, he'd try out for the football team. Coach says, Boudreaux, can you tackle? He takes off wide open, hits the telephone post, busts it into splinters. Can you run? He says, time me. Takes off, does the 100 yard dash in under nine seconds. Coach is very impressed. He said, can you pass the football? He said, well coach, if I can swallow it, I'm pretty sure I can pass it. 